There's no excuse for shooting down an airliner. There's no excuse for a targeted assassination by one state against another. Let's recognize the horror that the families of those that died in the airliner that was traveling from Tehran to the Ukraine are suffering from now. A consequence of a war in Iraq are incalculable. It will lead to the wars of tomorrow. Good afternoon all, this is Wendell decades, Daniel from this Street century, Night, this millennium, coming to you live my country, and direct the country that I was born in, the country that I love, has been engaged war in warfare in the Middle East. Sometimes Saturday, illegally, January sometimes 11, maybe well-intentioned, always 20. disastrously. Give me thumbs up, give me comment and follow. Our next speaker showed what a difference he would have made to foreign policy in this country at the last Prime Minister's Question Time when he took Boris Johnson to pieces on the legality of the actions we've, we've seen over the last week or so. He's the Vice President of CND and a previous Chair of Stop the War, Jeremy Corbyn! Thank you. Friends, thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for being here today to be a voice for peace, when a voice for peace is desperately needed in this country and all around the world. And you are that voice for peace. And today, let's recognize the horror that the families of those that died in the airliner that was traveling from Tehran to the Ukraine are suffering from now. A missile brought that plane down and as a result there are grieving families in many countries all around the world. Let's be clear, there can be no excuses here. This is an appalling act and part of a whole pattern of appalling acts all across the region. Let's send our sympathies and support to all of those families and all of the victims of that terrible disaster that happened outside Tehran a few days ago. But let's also recognize that that event and the events of the last few days and weeks have consequences. When big powers act illegally, when people step outside the norms of international law, there are consequences. There's no excuse for shooting down an airliner. There's no excuse for a targeted assassination by one state against another. All this does is sets off a spiral of violence and danger that will lead us to yet more wars in the future. And so our message here today, here from Trafalgar Square, is that we want in this country to be an influence for peace and a force for peace around the world. I would, want, I would want a British government's approach to this to be not to immediately side with the United States, whatever the questions put before them, not to put ourselves into hock to President Trump because of a trade deal that the British government wants to do with them, but to stand up for international law, for peace and for justice all around the world. I would also want that British government to have at its fundamentals, at its centre point, human rights, peace, justice and democracy all around the world. If you want to be taken seriously, 
on challenging human rights abuses in whatever country they occur, you have to be prepared to raise your concerns with every country, whoever they are and however powerful they might be. Otherwise, your credibility is seriously reduced as a result of it. And so the role of the British government ought to be to do all of those things. But sadly, I don't see any signs of that whatsoever from Prime Minister Johnson, who tried to hide away from any questions about Iran in, in Parliament this week and continues to offer con unconditional support to President Trump or whatever else he does. The background to the deterioration in relations between Iran and other countries in the region, the background to the increase in American and other military presence in the region has to be the consequences of Trump's decision to try to tear up the Iran nuclear deal, which was one that people worked very hard to achieve in order to reduce tensions in the region and end the sanctions policy against Iran notwithstanding concerns about human rights in Iran or the continued imprisonment of Nazim Sabari Radcliffe, who should be released, and that should be a message we should give. And so I hope the world will pause for one moment and recognise that one assassination has already happened and the disaster that's brought. An airline has been brought down. And that has led to grieving families all around. Surely now is the time to stop, take stock of the situation, resume serious talks and negotiations between Iran and the other re nations of the region, and stop the pumping of British arms into Saudi Arabia and every other conflict within the region. And make this year's nuclear non-proliferation treaty review conference at the beginning of May, a real one for once, a real one where we recognize the potential power of the nuclear non-proliferation treaty to end the proliferation of nuclear weapons and help to bring about nuclear disarmament around the world. Use that opportunity to renew the Iranian deal to bring about a conference to end weapons of mass destruction all across the Middle Eastern region and help to bring peace, justice and human rights to all the peoples of that area of the world. We cannot go on just being bystanders and observers of conflict after conflict with millions of people at risk, tens of thousands dying as a result of these conflicts and millions more living out their lives as refugees in camps all across the region. And the spread of terrorism as a result of the abuse of human rights and terrorism as a result of the desperation of so many people. Our coalition, the Stop the War Coalition, was founded in 2001 in this very square on the aftermath of the invasion of Afghanistan after 9-11. We grew very fast and we held that massive rally 17 years ago in Hyde Park to protest against the proposed and the sadly what happened bombing of Iraq and the consequence of that war. Many of us on this platform today spoke there on that fateful day of February the 15th, 2003. And we said then, the consequences of a war a consequence of a war in Iraq are incalculable. It will lead to the wars of tomorrow. It will lead to the terrorism of tomorrow. It will lead to the ruination of people's lives of tomorrow. And it will lead to the refugee flows of tomorrow. Sadly, you look at what's happened all across the region. You look at the consequences in Libya. You look at the refugee camps overflowing with brilliant, wonderful, intelligent, but desperate people wanting to make their lives and their contribution to the rest of the world. There is no road to peace that is led by bombing. There is no road to peace that's led by feeding arms into a region that's already overflowing with arms. The only road to peace is one that recognizes the cause of the conflict, 
and brings about a solution to those causes of that conflict that de-escalates and dials down the tension, that dials down the arms race, that upscales the race for human rights and justice. Our message today here in Trafalgar Square is we want a British government that will follow those principles, that will take those principles to the UN, that will take those principles at the centre of its foreign policy and will not lead us into yet another desperate war promoted by yet another United States president with half an eye to populism and another eye, and another eye towards future trade deals and all the dangers that that brings. The only way forward is one of peace. The only way one of forward is our voice. Our voice as ordinary people and ordinary citizens here, not just in Trafalgar Square, but all around who want to live in a world of peace where we challenge the real threats, the real threats of poverty, of inequality, injustice and of climate change and put our energies towards creating a safer world where there is a sharing of the wealth of the world and a safety of the future, not one conflict after another where the body bags come home in order to promote another conflict that yet more body bags can come home forever. Our cause is the cause and the search for peace. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you very much indeed, Jeremy. Give me a thumbs up, give me a comment and follow.